Hi, everybody. Welcome to Discovery Adventures. Some of you are joining us in our Zoom webinar, so you can chat with us and um, ask questions. And some of you may be joining today with us um, on YouTube um, as we stream live. Um, so you'll be hearing us talking to some people um, and getting their feedback and everything. Um, welcome every day, everybody. This is um, about bats today, all about bats. Um, if you're on our webinar, um, if you have a question, you can put it in the Q&A. You'll see the button down below. Um, and if we ask you a question, um, you can answer it in the chat that you'll see down below. Uh, thank you all for being here today. Um, Anna is with us from the museum. I am at my home and they are going to um, show us some really cool specimens and exhibits that we have about bats. Hi, Anna. Hi, Marcy, and hello everybody that's watching from home. So today we are gonna learn all about bats. This program is called, What Are Bats Good For? Because bats are really good for a lot of things. There's so much about bats. We're probably not gonna cover it all today, but we're gonna cover as much as we can. I'm in the museum with some of our bat specimens and I have even more that we're gonna be able to get really up close with today, which will be very exciting. Um, the first thing we have to cover, of course, is just like, what is a bat? Right, they're a really cool animal, but let's figure out some general things about them. They are mammals, just like us. They have fur. They have live young that they will nurse. They also are a really cool group of mammals because there's a decent amount of them. Does anybody have a guess as to how many bat species there are? In the chat, tell me how many species you think there are of bats. We know that there's like over 6,000 mammals, but not like a lot more than 6,000. So I'd pick maybe less than 6,000. But if you think about like big cats, there's like lions, tigers, snow leopards. With bats, we know that there's some little bats, some bigger bats. How many bat species do you think there are? Go ahead and type some number guesses into the chat there. So we have two guesses so far. One is 15 and one is 10. Oh, and somebody guesses 30. We've got 10, 15, and 30. Those are all some wonderful guesses, but you could even add them all together and still go way, way higher. I like to feel a little bit like an auctioneer because we've got like 30, but can anyone raise me on 30? <laughs> Looks like someone has 78. We got 78 bats. Anyone going higher than 78? 78 bats going once, going twice. Anyone going to raise us 10, on thousand. Okay, that's a lot of bats. That would be really <laughs> exciting. We maybe have 10,000 species of bats, but we have certainly not discovered them yet. We're not quite that close to 10,000. I do love that though. Other than the 10,000, you can add up all those other numbers and still be a long way from our total number of bat species. So far, scientists have identified over 1,400 species of bats. That is a lot of bats. That's about a fifth of all known mammals. It's a lot of bats, it's really exciting. So with all those bats, they do a lot of different things. And that's why we're gonna talk about some of the things they're good for because different bats do different things. They eat a lot of different foods. Does anybody have any ideas of some foods that bats eat? You can type them into the chat. Real quick, Anna. Um, we oh, have yeah. accidentally had the chat disabled. Um, so you should all oh, be no. able to chat now. Um, so thank you for letting me know about that. Um, and now you can tell Anna what different types of foods you think bats eat in the chat. <laughs> that will make it a lot easier now that you can use the chat. <laughs> yeah. So I think I've seen some apples and other fruits, plants, berries, blood, flowers, Bugs, cow blood, nice and specific. These are some really good guesses. Somebody has seen them swooping to eat bugs, berries, all sorts of different stuff. These are all really great examples of bat foods. Everybody has nailed it. Those are all examples of foods that bats can eat. I do also really like that some people specifically mentioned cow blood because there are vampire bats, they are real. They do eat blood, but it is only three of the 1,400 bat species. And they do mostly eat things that sleep outside, like cows, 
not people. Um, but even if they were to feed off of a person and when they are feeding off of other animals, they just lap up that blood, they make a little cut with their teeth and they just fly on their merry way. The animals are pretty fun. But yeah, so all these different insects or not insects, bats, depending on what they eat, they can help us out a lot as people. So bats that eat insects, what are some of the insects that you think they might eat? I don't know if those have been coming through in the chat. Marcy, you can tell me if they have. No, it looks like most people have just said insects, but now we're getting ants, mosquitoes, flies, crickets. Any of those correct? Yeah, those are a lot of really good guesses. They mostly eat insects that are flying, but some bats do swoop into the ground and catch other things like millipedes or spiders. And actually, Marcy, if you want to, you can share that picture of bats eating bugs and we can take a look at some of those different bugs that they eat. And mosquitoes is a really big one, right? I don't like mosquitoes. I don't think anybody likes mosquitoes. And when bats are eating mosquitoes, that can help reduce a lot of mosquito-borne illnesses, things that might make us sick, like West Nile virus or Zika or malaria. But also when we have bugs eating other, or bats eating other bugs, usually there's not bugs eating bats. Um, another one that I really like is the corn earworm moth. So that's a moth that eats a lot of corn and will actually disrupt a lot of crops. I really like corn. I'm from Indiana. I know corn's really big here in Illinois too. And when we have bats, they act as like a natural pest control. They consume a lot of those pests that farmers would have to compete with to grow their plants. So when you have more bats, you have more plants and less need for pesticides. And some of those aren't really great for us either. So that's really cool. And then a lot of people talked about fruits. Fruits are of course really good. We love a fruit bat. And when there's a fruit that is being eaten, the whole inside of the fruit goes through their digestive system. And of course, everybody knows after you eat, what do we all have to do? That food's gotta go somewhere. Falls right out of you. You know, there we go, Robin knows, you poop. So when bats poop, they're actually doing a really good job replanting those seeds into the environment. So it's in a nice little fertilizer packet and they'll even be able to be farther away from the original fruit they were eating, having kind of spread them out. So that's really cool. They're an amazing animal for replanting rainforests after they have been clear cut or burned down. Bats are some of the most important animals to help get that forest back on track, which is really cool. And also a lot of the seeds they're planting are things that we might eat, like figs. If you had any figgy pudding over the holiday season, bats are an important seed disperser for figs among other plants. And then some other people talked about flowers. You can see in that picture in the corner, a bat going on up to a flower. Maybe that's on a cactus, I think. Um, they do also pollinate plants and they eat the nectar from different flowers. So they'll get all the pollen on their face. They go to another flower and spread that pollen around. This helps the plants reproduce and is really important for another slew of plants that we use, including wild bananas, and mangoes, and also the baobab tree, which is that really cool kind of upside down looking tree that Rafiki lives in, if you've seen the Lion King. They also are really fun pollinators for the saguaro cactus, the one with the big long arms. That's another one of my favorites. And Marcy, if you go through these slides, I think we'll see more examples of bats doing all these different things, which is pretty cool. Oh, I forgot this one too. <laughs> this is the biggest and the smallest bat. So bats have very different sizes. The ones we see around here in the United States are usually pretty small, but they can get even smaller. The very smallest bat, the, the body is just about an inch long and that's called the bumblebee bat or kitty's hog nosed bat. And then the other bat that we see there is one of the biggest bats in the world that can have a six foot wingspan, usually like five and a half, but some people do also report them being six feet wide in wingspan. That's like as big as my wingspan, which is pretty big. It's pretty impressive. And they're pretty awesome bats. Those live in the Philippines. <laughs> and there's some really great pictures of bats up in those flowers. Very sweet little pollinators. And this is of course really important, not only so that these plants do reproduce, but they have more genetic diversity because again, those bats are flying really far, farther than bees or other pollinators might be able to fly. 
And then we see some of those great bats eating fruit, which is gonna enable them to disperse those seeds. Very fun little bats. I'm gonna use another camera too. Oh, and those are the bug eating bats. Those are also very good. We're gonna be able, now that we've seen these really awesome pictures of bats, we're gonna to try to go around and take a look at some specimens of bats a little more closely that we have in the museum on our handy dandy bat cam. If I can make the bat cam happy. And Anna, bat we have some questions if this is a good time to answer them. This is a good time. I will try to point it at relevant bats for your questions. That we will see. Great. So uh, you just answered one of them. What is the largest bat? Um, and then we have another one. How well can bats see in the dark? Oh, that's a great question. So one of the common myths about bats is people will say blind as a bat, um, but that is not very accurate, especially fruit bats. They actually have pretty big eyes and they can see very well because they need their eyes to locate fruit. But all bats can see pretty okay, but because they are out at night and it's extra hard to see in the dark, a lot of bats will echolocate, especially our smaller insect eating bats. They make really high pitched sounds and those sounds bounce off of things in their environment and go back to their ears and tell them where they were. It's kind of like how different ships might use sonar. Bats can do their own sonar called echolocation, which is pretty cool. That's pretty great. Um, and another question, how long are the fingers? That's a great question. They're really long compared to the rest of their body. And I'm really glad that you called them fingers because they are literally fingers, just like we have fingers, but theirs are really small. I really like this bat because it's got really big wings. So we can see right here, not only the length of their finger, which is longer than most of their body. <laughs> their longest finger is similar to the length of their body. So if you can imagine that your middle finger, your longest finger was as long as you are tall, that's kind of like what it would be like to be a bat, which would be awesome. And you can see there, how many fingers do they have? We can count them all up. There is just that one, two, three, four, and five, just like for people. Nice. Um, let's see, we have so many great questions. I don't think we'll be able to get to them all, but we'll try to get to um, as many as we can. One is, uh, how many bats are in Chicago? That is a great question. And I've got them all right here. Well, I don't know exactly how many individuals, but there are five different species that we see around Chicago. And I've got them in these trees here. So there's probably a lot of individuals. Bats can live in pretty big groups. If they're in caves, they're pretty small. They don't take up a lot of space. Um, so this one is called a silver haired bat, that dark one. The one above it is called an Eastern red bat. I really like one thing about them. They will hang from one foot on tree branches to disguise as a camouflaged dead leaf, which I think is adorable. This is the Hore bat, which has a really big range. It can be found in all of the states pretty much, including Hawaii, which is amazing. They're the only native land mammal on Hawaii. And then this is a big brown bat. And this is a little brown bat. And those are the five bats that live around Chicago. Really great. Um, yeah, if you wanna keep going, I'll um, pop in some questions as we receive them. Yeah. Um, other things about bats, their wings are very thin. It's just skin stretched over those fingers. And it feels very similar to your eyelids. And they're a little thin too. You can see that's what it looks like with light shining through the wings. Wow. I know I've seen a question there, do bats fight each other? And that's a great question. And sometimes they do. Um, bats also can help each other. So like any animal, they do have varied social relationships and sometimes they do kind of fight each other. I have seen, for example, in zoos and I've talked to zookeepers, 
Um, and you can see all sorts of different animal actions in a zoo. Sometimes it's easier there because most animals are kind of trying to hide from us. They don't really want to hang out with us. But in zoos, you might see animals compete over a really cool space to be. Maybe it's where most of the food is and they might kind of bite at each other. But as you can see, they're kind of funny little bodies. They're not exactly the best adapted for fighting. They don't fight a lot of other animals, but because they live in big social groups, they might get into little spats with other bats. Um, and someone would please, please, would can you answer, do bats have babies? Do bats have babies? They sure do. Bats have babies just like all sorts of other animals. And one of the fun things about little baby bats is they are very, very small. And bats live in big caves with lots of bats all together. There's some bats there that are kind of like on a cave-like surface. And when the parents go out to get food, they will sometimes like leave the baby on the cave wall and they have to come back and look for their baby among thousands of tiny screaming babies. And so they have to recognize the voice and the smell and then the little bats, babies and mommies find each other. Um, but they nurse, they have their nipples where the milk comes out is like in their armpits, which is kind of funny. Yeah, there are baby bats in the world. They're very tiny and very cute. Anna, would you like me to keep giving you some questions? Oh yeah, feed me all the questions at this that point. That sounds I'll take great. All the <laughs> um, there are so many. Um, I wonder if you could, someone's asking about bat hearing. Um, how well do they hear? How can they hear different frequencies than we can maybe? Yeah, so bats do hear really well. They have very specialized ears a lot of the time. If you look up different pictures of bats, you might see some really funky looking ears with like big folds of skin. They can hear frequencies that are higher than what we can hear. And if people want to listen for bats, they often have to use special devices that can hear the sounds that bats make. But yeah, any of the echolocating bats, which are usually the smaller ones, can hear extra good. Some of the bigger bats, like fruit bats, they do not usually echolocate. So they may not have the same hearing as a little bat. That's good to know. Um, and oh, Emily would like to know, are the bats that you have there alive or not alive? That is a great question. All of the bats that we're looking at are not alive. They are dead. They are specimens that have been preserved in the museum. I think most of these are, the big ones are from zoos and the ones that, so I've got some littler ones here too. These are collected when they're found dead. There's a lot of volunteers um, with the museum that are looking for different animals so we can understand more about the world that they live in. And if they're alive, different animals can get rehabilitated, but if they're not alive, then they can go into the museum collection so scientists can keep studying them and learning about them. So these are Eastern red bats that were collected by bird monitors um, in McCormick Place. And it says the location where they were found on that tag. Um, but these bigger bats, we got after they died at the zoo. Um, that's great to know. There are so many great questions here. Um, someone is really, really interested if bats um, eat snakes or mess with snakes at all. Do you know of any bats that might eat a snake? That is a great question. I do not know about bats and snakes. I know that there's bats that eat scorpions and bats that eat fish. I do not know about snakes, but that sounds like a cool thing to investigate. So it's hard to say. And some questions about where bats live. Um, why do they live in caves? Can they live anywhere else? What do they do in the winter? Oh, those are all very good questions. So some bats live in caves. Caves are really cool because they are really consistent temperatures. So those can be a good spot for bats to hibernate. In the winter time, some bats hibernate where they're going to rest most of the time and save their energy until it gets warmer and the bugs that they eat come back. Um, but some bats do not do that rest in the winter. So this is a vampire bat. Vampire bats live in warmer climates. They live in Central and South America. 
and they are eating big animal blood like cows or horses or turkeys or chickens. So they do not need to like hibernate. They just keep eating all winter and live in their regular lives. Um, but bats can live in all sorts of different places. There's some bats that actually make tents out of leaves. It's very cute. You can look up tent making bats and see some bats that build tents and it's very cute. Um, a lot of bats roost in trees. They'll just hang upside down in trees. We talked a little bit about the Eastern red bat who camouflages with the leaves. But bats come of all sorts of places, even in people's attics or under bridges. So sometimes they start living in spaces built by people. And Mercedes wants to know how old can a bat get? Ooh, I love that question. So bats can get surprisingly old. It depends on the species, right? There's over 1,400 different species and they all have different averages, but in general, bats live much older than other mammals of their size. Compared to like a mouse or a rat, it would be very uncommon for them to live up to six, but there's bat species in the wild that have been seen to live above 40 years, which is pretty amazing. So they can be pretty old. I'm wondering, Anna, if you have um, any good views of bats' teeth. Are they big? Let's what do they even look, look like? So we can take a look. Oops, sorry, I tilted it. There we go. So there's a skull here on this board that we can see some of those pointy teeth. This is a fruit bat. And so this bat is using those teeth to bite into fruits and tear off chunks and chew them up. That's great. Um, and then we have some good questions, especially for a museum that has dinosaurs. Um, can bats be fossils? Are there prehistoric bats? Oh, I love that question too. My friend, one of my favorite fossils in the museum is a really old bat fossil. It's upstairs in Evolving Planet. I don't have, I can't, I'm not fast enough to get up there right now or I'd teleport there and show you. But it is 50 million years old, I believe. And it's super cool. So it's uncommon for bats to fossilize because their bones are really delicate and thin. So we don't see them as much as some other harder, um, denser materials, but there have been some bat fossils and the Field Museum has one of the oldest known bat fossils. And it's on display in Evolving Planet um, right after the part with Sue the T-Rex, if you're looking for it. Um, and Carl would like to know which bat is bigger, the vampire bat or the fruit bat? Oh, definitely the fruit bat. So we can compare. So this is a vampire bat. Um, doo -doo -doo, let me see if I can hold my hand next to it. So it's behind glass. So there's like a couple inches, but you can see I could hold this bat in my hand. No problem. Um, this bat is huge. Um, it's very, very big. I could like high five this bat. Um, but it's, it's smaller than my cat in its body, but those wings are pretty big. So fruit bats are generally bigger than vampire bats. That's really great. Um, and then let's see, so many good questions. Um, how well are bats related to birds? Oh, that's a great question. Not closely. Um, Bats are much more closely related to us as humans and other mammals than they are to birds. One of the things we can do is compare their skeletons. So a skeleton of a bird is not gonna have all those long fingers. They're, if you've ever eaten chicken wings, you've seen bird arms and their bones are really reduced because they use those feathers to be able to fly. They're in a whole different group. Birds are much more closely related to T-Rex than they are to bats. And we're much more closely related to bats than they are to birds. That's really great to know. Anna, what is your favorite thing about bats? Oh, I like so many things about bats. Um, one of my favorite things about bats, I think is how they drink water. And it depends on the bat, but some bats, they will like littler bats, they're gonna go over a lake or a stream and they're going to be flying over it. And then they just skim the surface of the water and drink some water as they go. I, it just seems like a, such a fun, silly thing to do. But some of the big fruit bats, what they do is they dunk their whole body in the water. So those little bats just scoop some with their mouth. And these bigger bats, they sometimes just put their whole body a little bit in the water 
and then flap on out and then they will lick the water out of their fur they'll like hang up in a tree and like just drink it out of their hair which that i think is, is so really cool. cute <laughs> um and somebody just asked what the skeleton was did you um just go by a skeleton on the camera that oh the skeleton this yeah. is a bat skeleton so this is from a straw colored fruit bat nice you can see those long fingers. I'm curious about those toes. They um, look a little different from our toes. The shape of the foot is interesting. Yeah, so their foot is really well adapted to holding on to the surfaces, branches or cave walls because bats need to, or they do, they've adapted to hang upside down. That's their skill. They are very awkward on the ground. You do not usually see a bat on the ground because just look at this body shape. They are very awkward. They don't crawl around very well. The vampire bat has actually adapted to crawl a little better, um, but in general, bat feet are adapted to hold onto things. Like there's one holding onto a branch here and they have specialized tendons that kind of lock in place when they are hanging. So like if we were going to do an arm hang for a long time, we'd get tired and have to let go. But they're just kind of at rest when they're doing that, which is lovely. And then we have some questions, Anna, um, that all kind of pertain to how dangerous a bat could be. Um, so I wonder if you could talk to about that. Like, do fruit bats bite people? Um, can bats attack small animals like opossums? Um, can they hurt us? <laughs> Those are all really good questions. So the danger side of bats, a lot of people have some fears about bats because of how they're represented in the media more than their realistic dangers they pose to people or other animals. So bats technically can and might bite you if you are holding them. This is similar to if you pick up a mouse or a possum or any animal that doesn't know who you are and is scared. Um, most animals that don't know you are gonna be afraid of you because most animals are much smaller than humans. So that could happen. Um, but their teeth are not that big or anything. It's probably not gonna be a big deal except for the fact that bats can carry rabies. So if you are ever, first of all, don't touch wildlife in general. Second of all, especially don't touch bats. Third of all, if you do get bit by a bat, please go to an adult or a doctor and ideally both and you can get a rabies vaccine to make sure you will be super safe because that's the greatest thing about rabies. It has a vaccine. We are medically prepared for rabies. Um, but bat rabies is super rare overall. A lot of people have heard of people getting rabies from a bat um, because it can happen. It happens usually to less than two people in the United States every year. Um, so most things are more dangerous than bats, including vending machines falling on you. But if you do handle a bat, just make sure you talk about it to a medical professional and you should be fine. As far as bats eating other animals, some bigger bats do eat small animals, but even smaller than possums, like rodents, um, sometimes even other bats. There are bats that can eat other bats. Um, they don't live here. All the bats that we have in the Midwest eat insects. But in the world, there are some bats that are carnivorous and can eat some other small animals. Very cool. I'm curious, um, or I should say Robin is curious, where, um, what city or state do bat, are bats seen in? Where in the United States can you find these bats? You can find bats everywhere. So the bats that I've been looking at in these two trays, these are all from Chicago. So you can find bats here in a city, um, but you can find a lot of bats in Texas. I grew up in Indiana and there's bats there. There's bats in Florida. There's bats in California. There's bats in every state. I think if you get to Alaska, it gets a little cold. So you're gonna have a harder time finding bats in most of Alaska. But um, Canada, South America, Africa, Australia, Asia, Europe, bats live on every continent except for Antarctica. They are, we talked, right, there's so many species of bats, over 1,400, so they've adapted to a lot of different environments. Um, it looks like, oh, there, we're back. We lost um, the back cam there for a second. Um, it is almost 1.30, so some of you might have to leave us. Um, I do have um, two more questions I think you might want to answer, Anna, so if you can stick around. Um, please stick with us for these last two questions. Um, first, what fruits do fruit bats eat? 
It depends on where they live, but they will eat whatever fruits um, are in that environment. Some examples are wild banana, mango, dates, figs, um, jackfruit. We don't have fruit bats in the United States, so they're not going to be a lot of fruits that you might be thinking of, but I don't know if you're thinking about the fruits in your backyard, if you have any. Um, but yeah, they eat a lot of different fruits. Depends on the bat. And it looks like somebody- uh, And somebody in captivity, they that... can also eat other fruits too. Nice. And somebody's letting us know that bats are uh, their favorite animal. That's very exciting. <gasps> That's awesome. Bats are my favorite animal too, if you couldn't tell. <laughs> um, and then last question, I think, unfortunately, we're running out of time. Do bats um, get COVID-19 or did they start COVID-19? That is a very important question. So, so far, we know that bats do not have the same virus that people have. COVID-19 is a human pandemic that is spreading from person to person. And we've seen some cases where different zoo animals have also gotten it from people. But what we found in bats is a related virus. It's similar to how people are related to chimpanzees. Um, there just happens to be a person in chimpanzee over there for comparison. Um, <laughs> but they're not the same, right? They're similar, but not the same. So people have been studying bats to see what connections there are between that virus and the virus that are being passed between people right now in this pandemic. Um, so we are trying to learn more based on the viruses that bats do have, but it's not exactly the same. And we're still, we're still kind of trying to uncover the mystery. And there's a possibility that this related virus in bats jumped to another species and then to humans. We're still trying to figure out the mystery, but what we do know is we have seen no evidence of somebody directly contracting COVID-19 from a bat. So you don't have to be afraid of bats giving you COVID. Um, and we're hopeful in the museum, there's people that are studying bats, pangolins, and other animals to try to understand more about pandemics and diseases like COVID-19 so that we can be better prepared for the future. Thank you so much, Anna. Thank you everybody for all these wonderful questions. Um, if you would like to join us next week, you definitely can. You can go to the Field Museum website and sign up for our webinar, um, or you can join with us live on YouTube, whichever you would prefer. Um, we did have one uh, question that I think if you all joined us last week, um, um, our presenter, Jeff, kind of got lost at the end of it. And somebody did ask if Jeff survived. And yes, Jeff did survive. He is here with us today. Thank goodness. He's um, at his home. And you can see him right here with us. <laughs> Jeff's around. Yep. Surviving the dinosaurs. So thank you so much, everybody, for joining us today. Uh, I hope you learned a little more about bats um, and had a great time. We definitely had a wonderful time with you. Uh, thank you all. Have a great rest of your day. Yeah, thanks everybody. Have a good